brains in jars. Autopsy tables. <laughs> Headless skeletons. A delectable discourse in the macabre. With jazz hands and spirit fingers. I say no. We're actually right here at the Medical History Museum, right in Indianapolis on the campus of Central State Hospital. Okay, now I'll give you the fact that Central State Hospital has a little bit of a creep factor to it, but you really have to look past that because this place is absolutely tremendous. I mean, they have some of the best medical breakthroughs and some of the most innovative sciences dating back to 1896, and you can learn all about it right here on this episode of Doing Indy. When you come to the Medical History Museum, you look out for this lady right here. This is Jenny Turpening, and she's the executive director, or also known as queen to most of the people who know her. But um, Jenny is one of the people who will give you a tour of this, but she devotes all of her time to the Medical History Museum. And first of all, I just got to tell you, uh, I came in with a little bit of that creep factor. But in, you know, just walking around looking, this is a really, really fascinating place. It really is. This is. Uh... This is important science at the turn of the last century. The beginning of, of um, scientific psychiatry is what they called it. And, and we're standing in right now, which is a, a room where everyone would come in and start to learn, right? This right. is the amphitheater. Right. Well, but back in the day when this thing first started off in, in 1896 as a medical research facility, what were their primary goals at that time? They're, they're looking for the physical causes of mental illness. They're going to use science at the turn of the last century to help them understand what causes mental illness. And so, and, and Central State it was here already at yes, that point yes. too, so they could just go grab people off the side and go, hey, we want to look at your brain. Yes, but only with permission. Okay. They always get permission um, for autopsy, and, and then they perform a free funeral. Let's you know. see, I wasn't thinking of, I wasn't thinking of autopsy. I was thinking that they were still alive, because then no. you could just go grab them and just, no. they can't do that? Because um, crazy mostly. people would just say, sure. There's the table and the drain, and the water, and the dictation device, which 100 years ago was a speaking tube. It goes upstairs to another location. Um, somebody will sit upstairs, they listen as they examine the body. Uh, hey Zach, I need some pizza and uh, beer, and uh, see about getting some ladies for later on this evening. And that's what I would have done, you know? But then I would have gone back to my job and you know, started cutting up people more. What's really cool too is that, I mean, we, we're just still on the first floor. I mean, there's still so much to see. Like, you actually have live, not live, but real human, real, real human skeletons right. as opposed to right. what you would find in a high school class that was made out of plaster of Paris and, or plastic. And so you have that stuff here, but real bones. And real bones and you can actually take a look. But there's, there's a lot more to see than what we've, I mean, we've just kind of got started here. Here's this, here's this lazy Susan I mentioned to you earlier. So you can pass somebody equipment right. and, and they don't have to waste steps walking all the way around the table to get there. So there's lots of efficiency. So people were lazy then. <laughs> there's, this is the first time they're using science to help them figure out the most efficient way to do anything. Purdue does national studies on this, and they call it scientific management. So if I want to say, hey, Zach, why don't you pass me a vial of that crazy person's blood, right. he could pass me over the vial. He, he could do that. This is the entire hospital campus burial photo taken in 1921, almost nothing that still stands. And it's just not much. Uh, this is the carpentry shop that still stands. See, I'm still fascinated by the Beckman Theater. I love the notion uh, yeah. You get a bunch of inmates, they come around at Central State and they put on a play. Because you know what's great about that? You never know what you're going to get. Well, this <laughs> is true. So, so when you say that um, that's a, an herb or a medicinal garden down there, so do you, like, you got to be honest with me now. Like, you're going home, you're going to cook, and you're like, you know what? I need some oregano. I don't want to stop at the store. You just walk up. Take a couple you clips. could, and I have. But had, you don't. I don't. No, no. No, I, I, no. I, I just. I've you. had 
interns who have. Okay. Because okay. I'm not that good a cook. Okay. Um, and, but you're not going to report them to the... Oh, absolutely not. The, no, I've the, encouraged that. They, they've always asked permission when I was told, sure. Okay, good. Because I didn't, I didn't want the herb police. Oh, no. No, no. We don't have herb police. Okay. <sighs> hey, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Doing Indy and our look at the Medical History Museum. We tried to get them to laugh. We tried to have a little fun with them, but I guess they take their medical history that serious. And, and maybe you guys will, too, when you come out and check it out, because once you get past the whole creep factor of this thing, you know, having brains in jars and being on this, the campus of Central State Hospital, you'll see that there's a lot of great things to learn here. I mean, some tremendous medical breakthroughs, some great innovative sciences, and I mean, even if medical history doesn't interest you, from a historic standpoint, there's so much to see and do at this place, and you're really going to enjoy it. So for Doing Indy, I'm your host, Seth Hancock, and remember, in Indianapolis, it's always so easy to do so much. You, you, you just have to get out there and do something. See you next time.